Hello everyone and welcome to another update for Incubation Engineering MLOps. Uh, today is June 23rd and we're going to start talking about usage. Um, we added service ping data now and which means we will be able to start collecting data from self-managed customers that opt in for this. It will, we added in 15.0 so it will take a while until users actually update their installations. Uh, but it's nice to see that from the data at gitlab.com uh, it matches the data that we had before, the, that we were querying, and we see that a, the, a lot more users are doing the the, the, com the comments, the notes on MRs rather than commits, which is not what we were uh, receiving as feedback from self-managed customers, which were using the commit. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this data evolves once start once we start receiving data from the from the self-managed ones. But um, yeah, that's pretty good. And we also see uh, the on the June uh, data that, well, it's not complete, the last bar over there, the second graph. But growth, ha like the number of, uh, of nodes has not slowed down. So, which means that it, this was not a novelty effect. It was not that we added and then people start, just got interested, we used once and then never again. No, people keep using this feature, which is pretty cool. Moving on on to consolidation, we currently have a lot of MRs in progress to consolidate this feature and move on to the next uh, challenge. One is that we move the library, uh, the underlying library that computes uh, the diff into GitLab codebase itself. Uh, we did that to make it easier for maintainers later to find the code, code review, and so on and so forth. Um, we created initially on the thought that it could be used by different parties, but the reality is that it's not gonna be used for by different parties. This is a very uh, specialized piece of code and it's better off within GitLab code base. We did some small improvements to the UX as well, uh, and we are fixing some general bugs across the, across the board. And, but we do have two quite non-trivial issues that we want to work on before we move on to the, to, to the next one, and which are the file size. One of the biggest complaints or pain points that users uh, reach me out to talk about is that they cannot see the bad improved diffs because notebook diffs are too large. Now we have currently a cap of 500 kilobytes on the patch size, and uh, since uh, notebook diffs include images, they easily, easily explode uh, this, uh, this, this limitation. So I'm trying to work a way uh, to disable this limit or to increase the cap for diffs, uh, specifically for notebooks, because it is a use case that it's a valid one. Users expect this to happen. It is large. Two notebooks are almost like a directory. So it's not that it, it's the same as having seven files in a merge request. They are still loaded if the, there are seven files, just that here the seven files are like bundled in into one. So this is the thing I'm focusing on right now, getting this uh, the file size uh, to work or having a large the file size for Jupyter Notebooks. And the second one is performance. A lot of the code base that we wrote is in uh, Ruby, which for that use case or parsing large files, it's quite slow, causing timeouts. Uh, and we want to improve that. We have a good lead of using, uh, of moving this code into more offloading this into C. Uh, we have a working uh, prototype already, um, and we are benchmarking the results. What's next? MLflow. When? Likely starting in July. I want to get done the, at least the diff file size so that we can get more users to use uh, notebook diffs. But yeah, so we, we need to, to, to go with that. And that's what I had with today. Uh, see you next time.